and hello fellow tankers Space Bandit here with another episode of World of Tanks and today we are in a brand spanking new Italian tank we are in a P43 TER or I would call it P43 the terrible <laughs> well the tank has some good sides and some bad sides to it so we'll cover that a little bit later so what I got today for you guys is I got two games in this tank and in between what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover some specs and uh, we're also gonna focus on aim time so if you guys uh, want to pay attention to the aim time there will be difference between this game and the last game in this game basically I was mostly optimizing my view range and and the last game that I'm gonna show you is I will you know it will be based on the gun performance optimization so pay attention to that now with respect to the Italian line I was a little bit surprised how these tanks play per se because looking at the Progetto and well first of all let's get rid of this guy here now I think my Tiger calls for some help so we're gonna try to come up here and put a shell into this guy there we go so yeah about the Italian line again the surprising thing was that in the Progetto you get a very accurate gun and pretty reasonably good view range. The tank is very small, therefore the gun was really good on it. And that's what I was expecting on a tier 6 and tier 7. Unfortunately, on the tanks that I've played so far, and I free XP basically to tier 6, started with tier 6 and now I'm playing tier 7. One thing I noticed that, first of all, these tanks have a shitty gun <laughs> mostly all of the guns are shitty both tier 6 and tier 7 and both tanks are so huge that you know forget about the camel I mean this tank is bigger than ISM okay <laughs> it is a big big tank so as far as mobility goes I have to say that mobility is pretty good the weak points of this tank and the tank at tier 6 is basically gun performance and shell penetration so we're gonna cover the penetration later but because of the accuracy of this gun and how bad it is basically you are forced to use APCR rounds or premium rounds because as you can see here I'm shooting at this tiger and for the life of me I don't know what's going on where I'm hitting this tank the gun is missing left and right so you know in any other tank that I would play, this guy would be punished already. Like, there's no way he would be allowed to sit there and just, you know, and just, you know, just chill. I mean, he's got to be taken out of the game. Unfortunately, my gun is not listening, and that's the way the gun performs on this tank. Now, like I mentioned to you guys before, there will be a difference between this game and the last game. So, I hope you pay attention to that, and we'll cover that later. But, yeah, that was the surprising thing for me. I was expecting Italian tanks to be well confined, have good camo, have good gun, reasonable view range, but none of these tanks that I've played so far, they have it. So, which is kind of deceiving because you would expect those things to be similar, at least to some degree. Anyway, mobility is really good. Look at this. The tank can go pretty fast, so no problems there. I th actually, as a matter of fact, the tier 7's mobility is absolutely spectacular, but uh, tier 6's mobility suffers quite a bit. Basically, tier 6 and tier 7, they look like the same tank to me. The difference is the penetration values and mobility. These are the two big differences. So tier 7 is much better than tier 6 with respect to those two things. Look at that lag. <laughs> that, was, that was awesome how I missed that shot. By the way, guys, I'm off after a two-week layoff. I haven't played in two weeks, so some of my aiming might be questionable here. So, yeah, just keep that in mind that I'm a little bit rusty. I have wooden fingers in both of these games. I call them wooden fingers because, like, I don't know, but just my stick skips every once in a while for whatever reason, if I, like this, if I don't play for a while. So, lack of practice. But both games are pretty good, actually. Uh, both games are ace tankers, so... Um, yeah they should be both good now the second one is crazy second game is crazy so but we'll wait until we get there 
as you can see on cam when i play on this map especially medium tanks i like to not go to the beach but i like to take the high ground because basically if i'm sitting in this area here a six lane it allows me to have shots across to the other side of the field and to, yeah scuff another shot wow i could have had so much more damage in this game if i wasn't just shooting blindly at tanks and not hitting them so yeah the high ground is important in many cases it's contested but in this case it wasn't and when the opposing team is not contesting this area basically it's not gonna end well for them so the choke is the one and two lane that's usually where fighting happens but you gotta send someone on, on this side especially if you're in a medium tank it's a good position here so as you can see here i'm gonna feast on this 45 tp i don't know he noticed me all of a sudden he decided to turn around and go the other way instead of trying to put a few shots in my direction try you know he should be trying to scare me at least a little bit make me run make me at least worry about being shot at instead of just kind of turning around and running away so i don't know uh, it's really strange but what i've seen lately at tier 10 i'm not really surprised the games that i play and maybe i will show one of the games at some point so that you guys see what i'm talking about just people don't use brains anymore i don't know why um anyway so we're basically nearing the end of uh, of the game so we're just chasing after this arty and i thought at this point in time that you know there's no way i can get to this arty's gonna get taken out in no time <laughs> but there will be a little twist so as you can see this tank can go right what am i going 50 over 50 kilometers an hour so yeah it that's really really good now take a look at this Artie takes out a medium tank so i'm like oh i might still get a shot at him but unfortunately he gets shot down by Artie. so the game comes to the end so 3000 damage guys it's a hard earned 3000 damage in this tank i gotta tell you if you're averaging 3000 damage in this tank you are a king i don't know how people do it if they do it but i had trouble reaching 3000 so my average in this is probably below 2000 actually it's just the gun the gun is a problem with this tank it's pretty brutal i mean and uh, i i'll show you next what i'm talking about because what wargaming advertises as far as the aim time goes it really bugs my mind how that works maybe i don't have a good concept with respect to understanding how that works but if someone tells me aim time is 2.4 seconds i expect it to be 2.4 seconds now i understand that there are other things at play but there's no way aim time is 2.4 seconds even with my crew optimized and all the perks that i threw on after this game my aim time is probably i don't know below three seconds i, I measured guys i measured so and i'll show you the counter in in the sample videos that i have so that you guys can see what i'm talking about here anyway so let's take a look at the specs quite quickly for this tank the engine power is 700 this is the top package that i'm running on this tank penetration is quite subpar 165 on standard rounds 195 on premium rounds so if you're facing tier 8s or tier 9s there is no way you're penetrating them with 195 millimeters of penetration from the front so you're gonna have to flank these tanks go f from behind uh, try to shoot them in the side because there's nothing else you can do rate of fire 6.67 my reloads at about eight seconds for 240 damage it's not spectacular per se but if you compare it to tanks like t20 in the american line it probably is fairly similar to that as far as gun performance goes aim time shows at 2.4 seconds again i'll show you why it's not 2.4 and i was really surprised to read this spec over here because yeah when i did my comparison it, it was well off so we'll take a look at that accuracy at 0.4 which is again not the greatest anything below 0.38 i would consider okay 0.4 is kind of mm. threat armor nothing to really speak about this tank has no armor so don't focus on that although it has funny angles and sometimes shots do bounce off of it quite interestingly view range is 380 meters which is not bad so i would suggest that you optimize your gun performance first and play as a secondary support tank 
don't go up front because you won't be able to spot anything anyway so you have to count on your team to spot for you and then you play in the background but optimize for gun performance first and then optimize your tank for view range second and here again uh, i wanted to take a look quickly on the gun specs basically i was checking whether they have any stats with respect to aim time while moving the vehicle and i couldn't see that so that's why i'm looking at this here but on the right hand side you can see its main attributes things like firepower is at 30 survivability at 35 mobility 35 concealment 49 and spotting 78 now we're gonna do a couple quick tests here so basically i got two short clips and in each clip i'm gonna look at the aim time so what we're gonna do is we're gonna stop we're gonna look at the wall over here and look at the timer in the right top hand corner and you can see the time going through so from the time i stop to the time actually my circle shrinks it's in between three to four seconds as you can see let's do that again one more time so you can see what i'm talking about I'm moving that circle is huge absolutely huge four seconds it's a four second aim time guys so i don't know what's 2.4 it's actually four now if you just move your turret that aim time could be 2.4 seconds because it seems maybe that's what it is when the vehicle is stationary and move your turret but yeah so without gun optimization guys forget about playing this tank so what we're gonna do now so basically i have the crew that i had in a progetto now in a progetto i was running coded optics because i wanted this tank to be optimized for spotting right so i also had raycon skill on the crew as well as situational awareness so those three basically extend the view range right so what i decided to do here is i changed everything i put vertical stabilizer enhanced gun lane drive and rammer for the gun that optimizes gun performance and now for the crew skills i'm gonna put on snapshot and i'm gonna put on what's the other one called the skill that improves gun performance on a move right so that's what i'm gonna do i can't remember the name now it's gonna come in in a second hang on a second let me scroll through here there it is smooth right that's what it's called it's called smooth right some people don't know how important this skill is smooth right is one of the most important perks for gun performance because whenever your tank moves when you stop turn that's when your aim circle is going to shrink significantly faster right so what we're going to do here is going to we're going to do another test let's drive up to the rock like we did in the last time and let's see if we can do the countdown test again take a look at the top right hand corner for countdown we shaved it down to three seconds so again we're fully moving we're driving but once we stop three seconds so we shaved a whole second off of our aim time but again it's not 2.4 seconds it's three seconds right now when i move my turret only the circle barely shrinks so as you can see this setup is optimal for the gun but now we have no view range remember that so now let's test this out so we see um, this IS crossing right in the middle of the field. You can see me moving my gun. The circle is not changing in size. Now it is because I move my tank, but now it's not. So I can now easily, and da, Russian armor. Yeah, Russian strong steel. Anyway, when I just move my turret right now, it uh, it's good. So let's see these guys coming out like i said i'm moving my turret and there's not much movement when i move my tank there is some movement there so now we can play we can punish these guys from long distance so that makes this tank playable if you guys set it up this way it will make this tank playable because the way i started playing it at the beginning it's not playable at all trust me it's not playable so you gotta make sure that at least you have few skills for the crew unfortunately i didn't have much time to grind so i have only four but yeah i mean it is what it is
Okay, so now let's jump into the last game of the evening. And we are on map Arctic Region Summer. One of my most favorite maps in the game. And I'm a top tier in this matchup. There are two artilleries in place, so we have to be wary of that. I was considering going to C2 area over there, but again, you know, even though I'm top tier, I'm not the heaviest armored vehicle. I do have some mobility, so I decided to do something a little bit different. And what I'm going to show off to you today, guys, is a quite nice position, which is in G5. And from that position, you can get shots across to the other side of the map. And that position is right here, that little incline right here. It's a really nice pocket actually, it protects you from artillery. So artillery can't really shoot you in this location unless you expose to one side or the other. Then artillery will be able to hit you, but if you stay in this pocket, you're fairly safe. So as you can see, it's a nice view range here across to the other side of the map. And also, this position gives you opportunity to shoot at the guys that are coming from the left side or from H9 area, somewhere around there. So I'm just going to play it patient here. I'm just going to wait. It's a uh, distraction mode. So basically, yeah, there's no flag. And both teams basically have to, you know, take each other out. But uh, knowing me, I'm very impatient already. I'm trying to figure out... I, I don't like staying in one position for too long. I get very impatient and that's my problem in this game many times because patience is such a virtue in World of Tanks. If you don't have it, then yeah, it's... You get yourself in a pretty bad situation and then all of a sudden you die. So I see shots at this Tiger 1 here. He overexposed. So as you can see, I can easily poke out from behind the rock here and shoot at him but unfortunately at the same time I get hit from the other side because if I have shots to that side obviously these guys that are over there that are sitting currently at C3 they have shots at me as well and that light tank player seems like he's quite knowledgeable when it comes to map because he's sitting in that pocket at C3 it's a quite nice pocket as well if you can get an early position there, you can actually get shots across to C1, somewhere over there. So, just like that, I I f try to focus him, see if I can get some shots at him. I know he's going to be a pain. But, yeah, he disappears, so we're going to switch attention to the other side of the field here. And this... Ah, yes, unfortunately, he went way too deep. I mean, it's it would be okay if he just side scrape off of that rock on the left side. But he's definitely overexposing himself and our friendlies on top of the hill cannot really protect him. So I put one shell into this KV-2 but unfortunately I wasn't able to save our IS and there's no way I'm going to try to overexpose myself. I have to pay attention to the other side of the map just in case the light tanks start shooting at me again. What you're going to see in this game what I mentioned to you before, I optimized gun performance and gun works a lot better in this game. Actually, I hit shots in this game that I was surprised I actually hit them. Um, so yeah, I mean... <laughs> I think this tank is playable once you optimize your crew and your equipment. But your view range is going to suffer, so remember that. So we're losing this game very early and as normal in my games that's what usually happens but we're gonna try to not overexpose ourselves not be too drastic not move too much from this location here and yeah i'm targeted right now obviously i'm not carrying six cents because i'm optimizing for gun performance here so yeah i don't like playing without six cents but unfortunately it's not the case here so i missed a shot there and uh, we're gonna focus this T1 heavy. We should be able to hit him. Yes, we hit him. We take him out of the game. Now we see this IS. Can we take him out of the game? Yes, the gun works. We take him out of the game. As you can see, I'm firing APCR rounds. Yes, the Prem spammer at it again. No, the thing is, guys, this tank, because of the accuracy, I mean, you can't really 
blame people using APCR rounds because you want to try to hit a tank. You aim for the middle of the tank, but if you don't hit it in a weak spot, obviously you won't pen, so you want to be able to pen. Although these targets here are not that difficult to pen, but I do love the shell velocity. Like I mentioned to you guys before, APCR rounds are so much better than AP when it comes to that. Although penetration does drop over distance, remember that. So here, uh, this light tank, pain in the ass. He actually uh, sneaked through the middle and he's going for our Artie. So I was trying to take him out here, but Artie unfortunately tracks him in a spot where I can't hit him. Even if I move slightly to the right, I wouldn't be able to hit him because he's just behind that rock. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait until he comes out. We're gonna line up the shot and <laughs> derp. The gun decides to troll me. Actually, two things happened there. First of all, the shot went to the right. And second, it was actually kind of a ghost shell because it hit just the upper lip of his track on the rear side or his rear end. So I think I should have taken him out here and unfortunately I didn't and we're gonna lose our Artie because of that, which may come into play at the end of the game. But I have some help now, so I'm gonna scoot down here. We're gonna take out the KB2. But that light tank in the back is going to be a thorn, so I can't just uh, let him roam around the back because he's got our behinds. So I'm going to come back into the same position here to get a little bit of high ground and see if he gets spotted again. Yes, he's spotted right there, so we're going to try to take him out of the game. Will the gun work? Yes, it did, so we take him out of the game. And just like that, we have our fifth kill of the game, and we even this game up 5v5. So right now we have a slight advantage because we have a lot more mobile tanks. They have two artilleries. So at this point in time, I decided to scoot and engage this tank destroyer. We need to really take him out of the game. So I kind of see him falling back here, but I uh, wasn't sure whether he's setting a trap for us. But he's going to run off completely. And it's kind of an unfortunate situation because our heavy tank at D8... He's uh, going in right now to engage the medium tank there and, and the artilleries. But the tank destroyer that was falling back from this location, he's going to see him right away. And he will take him out of the game just like that. Unfortunately, I auto-aim here like a noob instead of aiming manually. But we do manage to take him out of the game. So just like that, we're on our sixth kill, guys. So Top Gun in the back. Unfortunately, we're shorthanded now because... I guess the enemy's medium tank has taken out the other heavy tank that was on the other side at B7. So basically all we have right now is uh, tank destroyer. I don't know, it's a tier 7 American tank destroyer, I think. And a Churchill 7, I think. But in a split second here, our tank destroyer is going to get wrecked. He got absolutely wrecked by artillery so at this point in time we are so low in numbers so I basically told the Churchill I'm like you know what let's defend this position I was actually convinced that the opposing team is gonna rush us so as you can see I'm trying to push this wreck in front to build the defensive wall and to create some protection in case they will be coming from this side so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna guard this side of the field while our friendly heavy tank is gonna guard the other side now the only reason we're doing this is because they have a medium tank which is Chinese T-34-1 as well as T-29 the American heavy tank now I'm mostly afraid of the heavy tank of T-29 because it would be uh, he would be a tough customer to take out of the game now at this point in time I don't know where they are, they definitely have an advantage so we have to be more in a defensive mode here. What I'm trying to do here is come up and spot even though I have pretty crappy view range but I thought maybe if they'll be coming through the middle I'll be able to catch them. So I'm just basically covering all of my behind, all of the options, all of the enemy's options to try to get in and uh, engage us. So I'm going to scoot down into here now. I'm going to try to take a look if I can spot anything. In the meantime, I'm not sure. I have only six APCR rounds. Obviously, I'm going to need APCR rounds for the T-29. 
but I don't want to use them all at once. So if T-34-1 shows up, I don't need APCR rounds on him. At the same time, I wasn't sure whether I should be using AP or APCR. I decided to switch to APCR rounds at this point in time because it's clash time. And if T-29 does show up, then I already have the rounds loaded. Now, the first shot is very important, especially if you're behind like this and you catch your enemy trying to come up and get you. First shot is very important because you can take the first shot and then hide into cover. And, uh, you know, you negate your enemy, um, damaging you at the same time. So you basically, you are maintaining your hit points. That's the most important thing. Now, I decided to go for it here. Basically, I didn't see them coming from any area. So I'm like, okay, what is going on? I was completely expecting them to move. And I, if you look at the timer on the top of the screen, actually, you know, what, is, what are we? Are about four minutes now. So we don't have much time left here. And I don't really want to stay passive and don't do anything in this game. I still want to try to push the progress. All of a sudden, we spot this T-29. And look at that. He's AFK. So we're going to try to take advantage of this situation. I was wondering whether the Artie is going to fire at me in this location. I just I don't know where Artie is. I mean, you would expect him to be in B2, somewhere in there. But by this point in the game... They might have relocated. And again, I shoot at the T29, I bounce. Those shots should be going in easily, but they're not. I'm gonna try to do it again. Again, we bounce. So we're just wasting our APCR rounds. And that's the strange thing in this game, guys. So I fire my APCR rounds and I can't penetrate. But I will be able to penetrate with my AP rounds. Where's the logic in that? Sometimes I don't understand this game, really. Lately, it's just weird things going on with this game. Gold shells, track shots, and no pens. I don't know. <laughs> so this is a strange thing. APCR rounds can pen. My AP rounds can. So, And it's not really far distance. We're talking 230 meters here. So the important thing is we need to take him out of the game because I don't want him to wake up. And once he's out of the game, it will be much easier to uh, take care of the Chinese medium and the Arties. So all of a sudden, the Chinese uh, medium tank shows up from the side. Uh, fortunately, he misses his shot. But I don't know what my Churchill is doing. It would have been nice if he actually, you know, took a shot and at least brought him down in health a little bit. So the medium tank is two shot to me right now. I'm basically telling Churchill, you got to attack. We have only two and a half minutes left. So, oh, that was close. Artie hits a shell right beside me. So I know the Artie is sitting there in a corner. But... What I'm going to do here, I really need this Churchill's support. Because if he could come back to where I am, or drop in to the area where I am, he could potentially flank them from one side, and I could go around from the other side. But he's stubborn, he's just sitting in the same location and not moving. I don't know why, but I'm wasting my time right now trying to show him the way. Um, and again, I don't know if he's aware that he can actually come up through this way, so I'm showing it to him. Again, he doesn't really care. And why do I always end up with teammates like this? Especially when it's clutch. Like, I don't really know, guys. It really bogs my mind. So anyway, I got only, what, minute and a half left. So I decided to go for it. Decided to rush this medium tank. But then I changed my mind. And that was probably the stupidest thing I would have done. Because I came up here, I couldn't spot them. I couldn't spot anything and I was like, hmm, maybe they actually relocated because when you think about it, they have three tanks remaining. If none of them die, they're going to win the game. So it's up to us to push it right now. So someone clicks the map at A0 or somewhere around there. And I'm like, are they really there? I can't really spot anybody. So I turn around again and I'm going to go back to that location. We're going to try to climb that little hill over here. Again, I can't spot anybody. I can't spot a medium tank. I can't spot any of their artilleries. I'm like, they're not here. They can't be here. So, right when I switch my direction, the medium tank gets spotted. And Churchill gets taken out. So, I'm like, you know what? That's it. I'm just going to scoot down and take care of this T-34-1. This is it. Three seconds. We should be able to do it. And if Artie is in a corner, we'll be able to take him out. So, we line up a shot on him.
I, I don't know what to say. I was almost full health. I was almost full health. And artillery splashes me for over 900 damage. Artillery splashes me for over 900 damage. And I'll show you exactly what I mean, guys. Nevertheless, it was really spectacular game. We got Ace Tanker, we got seven kills, we got a Devastator medal, we got a Top Gun medal. We managed to put up 3.3k damage, fired 24 shots, we had 19 direct hits and 17 penetrations. But this could have been, this potentially could have been my second pools medal, guys. Why is it that World of Tanks decides to screw me whenever there is a situation like this? And not only that I get screwed, I get teammates that are incompetent and they cannot help me. Why does it have to happen to me? I ask myself that question all the time. It is what it is. I can't change it, unfortunately. It just would have, could have, you know. So look at those clips, guys, here at the end of the game. You can see what actually happened. How is that possible that the Arty shell completely misses me, but splashes me for over 900 damage? Blows my mind. I already had a plan in place. I was gonna shoot the 34 one, I was gonna ram him. That would take him out of the game. Then all I had to do is turn around and go engage the Arties and take him out of the game. I think I would have had enough time. You don't think 30 seconds is enough? I think it would have been enough. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I gave you pointers on how to play this tank. It's not the greatest, but you can make it work to the point that it's playable. Go check out Clone Guy 72 and Gata Dinghy. Links to their channels are in the description section below. That's it for today. Until next time, happy tanking, Space Bandit, checking out.